Hello everybody, this is Mr. Lawback. In this video, I'm going to go over the challenges that faced farmers and the agriculture industry during period six and how those challenges were met. We will specifically go over the Grange Movement, the Farmers Alliance, and the Populist Party. So let's begin. In the 1880s, American farmers were struggling, especially in the West and in the South. Many farmers felt they were being victimized by banks and railroad companies' unfair business practices. These farmers blamed government policy for their troubles. They were also angered by the government's fiscal policy and the state of currency. After the Civil War, the government took the wartime greenbacks, or cash, out of circulation. Many politicians believed that a low money supply would help curtail inflation. They put the U.S. on the gold standard. The gold standard was where every dollar in circulation would theoretically be backed up by gold held in government reserves. Because of the gold standard, deflation did occur. In turn, many farmers who were in debt found it more difficult to pay off their loans. The government did not do a lot to help farmers' debt situation, as the government was run mostly by fiscally conservative people at the time. Now we should note that farming was and still is a debt business. You would have to borrow money for the equipment, for all the supplies, and then you wouldn't actually make money until the end of the season, and you got paid for your crops. Also, much of the land that is used in farming is mortgaged and not paid for outright. So debt is a reality of farming back then and even nowadays. To respond to these challenges, Western farmers founded the Grange Movement between 1867 and 1868. This organization was founded by Oliver Kelly. By 1875, over 800,000 members had joined the organization. The Grange, officially named the National Grange of Order of Patrons of Husbandry, was an organization that encouraged families to band together to promote economic and political well-being of the community of agriculture. They set up cooperatives to pool and share resources. The Grange also worked to provide a social outlet and an educational forum for isolated farm families. You could think of the Grange movement as sort of a labor union, business organization, and social club for farmers. The Grange also campaigned for state control of railroads and grain elevators. They did not have a specific political party at this time, and in 1878, many farmers ended up supporting the Greenback Party when it came to politics. Out of the Grange movement came the Farmers Alliance. The Grange usually organized farmers at a local level. The Farmers Alliance linked associations on a statewide and nationwide level. The Farmers Alliance allowed farmers the opportunity to negotiate lower prices for supplies and join together for the purpose of purchasing equipment and other farming needs. They also exhibited political strength through the Farmers Alliance. Now, not everybody that was a member of the Farmers Alliance was a farmer. There were teachers, doctors, and other members. The Farmers Alliance also tried to recruit labor groups from the major cities. By 1890, the Farmers Alliance had one million members. Some of the policies that Farmers Alliances called for were a graduated income tax, state ownership of railroads, lower tariffs. They believed that high tariffs made it difficult for them to compete in the foreign market, and free silver and currency reform because they wanted more money available and in circulation. Because remember, the farming industry had a lot of debt. Many of these goals were summarized in the Ocala platform that was issued at the Farmers Alliance Convention in Ocala, Florida. The Farmers Alliance had some success during the 1880s and 1890s in having some supporters elected to local and state offices. In the South, the Farmers Alliance elected four governors and 47 congressmen. Farmers in the later part of the 19th century became more politically active than they had been in the past. Also, women played an important role in the alliance as well. Mary Lease became a popular speaker, telling farmers to, quote, raise less corn and more hell. The Farmers Alliance offered women opportunity that there had not been in other aspects of American life at the time. The Colored Farmers National Alliance and Cooperative Union, known by the acronym of CFA, was founded in Texas in 1886 to protect African American farmers in the South from falling commodity prices, rising farm costs, and high interest rates. This organization was formed because some Farmers Alliance groups did not accept African Americans as members. The federal government responded to farmers' unrest by passing the Interstate Commerce Act in 1887 and the Sherman Antitrust Act in 1890. 
We will talk more about these two pieces of legislation at a different time, but they were not very effective at first and would take some time to produce results. But they were considered victories for the Farmers Alliance and like-minded groups. At their convention in 1892, the Farmers Alliance launched the People's Party, also known as the Populist Party, in an attempt to unite workers and farmers around the country. This political party was made up of many groups, but farmers were the driving force. The populist platform called for increasing the amount of currency in circulation, a progressive income tax where the wealthy would pay a higher percentage of their income in taxes, the direct election of senators, government ownership of railroads, telegraph, and telephone systems, a standard eight-hour workday, and restrictions on immigration, as they were seen as a challenge to American-born labor. James Weaver, the Union general from the Civil War, who was long involved in the currency issue, was the first presidential nominee of the Populist Party. The Populists received 1 million popular votes and 22 electoral votes in the presidential election of 1892. Most of their votes came from the West. In the Northeast and the South, they struggled, where the Democrat and Republican Party was still dominant. The Populists remained a political force after the 1892 election. They opposed Grover Cleveland since he was a strong defender of the gold standard. The economic depression of 1893 spread hardship across the country, including, of course, among farmers. The populace responded by criticizing the government's fiscal policy and the influence of Eastern business leaders. In 1896, the Republicans nominated William McKinley, who ran on an industrial economy platform calling for the gold standard, high tariffs, and support of industrial workers. The Democratic candidate was William Jennings Bryan, who won the nomination after giving a riveting, eloquent speech. In the speech, Bryan supported bimetallism, or free silver, which he believed would bring the nation prosperity. He blasted the gold standard, concluding the speech by famously saying, you shall not crucify mankind upon a cross of gold. Now, the cross of gold speech is something that commonly finds its way into the A push test at the end of the year. So you should be familiar with its meaning and purpose. Brian was a big supporter of using silver to expand the currency available. He won the Democratic and Populist nominations with his speech. In the general election, William Jennings Bryan won the South and the West but lost to McKinley. With a large financial campaign helped by big business support, McKinley carried the Northeast and the Midwest handedly. As a matter of fact, many business leaders told their employees that they would lose their job if Bryan had won. Prosperity for many returned in the late 1890s. The economy got a little better for farmers as well. It became clear that American society was changing as big cities grew in population and America continued on its industrial path. The Populist Party faded away, but their influence on politics could be felt for generations beyond. Some of the big takeaways. Farmers had become more politically active than they ever had been in the past. Due to technology and farming, farming had become a less common occupation during period six. Remember, people were moving to the cities as the nation industrialized and moved away from a more agricultural lifestyle. I think it is easiest to think of the Grange as the original movement, the Farmers Alliance as a more robust organization, an outgrowth of the Grange movement, and the Populist Party, or the People's Party, was a political party from this movement. So I hope this video helps you better understand the challenges that face farmers during period six and how they responded to those challenges and what the long lasting impacts were. Have a great rest of the day.